Okay, so this video is all about stability, specifically sit on top fishing kayak stability. Since I fish, so I wanted to talk about stability. Let's dive in, shall we? So let's say this is our fishing kayak. This kayak is floating because of these two forces, gravity and buoyancy. Gravity pulls the kayak down, buoyancy pushes it up. These two forces cancel one another out. As a result, the kayak stays afloat. The center of gravity would be the center of the weight above the water. In this case, would be this spot. The center of buoyancy would be the center of the volume of the kayak under the water. Or the center of the amount of water that is displaced. When there is no external force, the center of gravity and center of buoyancy are vertically aligned. In this position, the kayak is in static equilibrium. It is stable. Now, if we heel the kayak, heel is the technical term, if we push the right side of the kayak down, what happens is that there will be more water displaced on the right side and there will be more buoyant force on the right side. As a result, center of buoyancy will shift towards the right side, center of gravity will stay the same. Continue pushing, same happens, more buoyant force on the right side, the center of buoyancy will shift, center of gravity will stay the same. Again, we continue, same thing happens. We continue past a certain point, the center of gravity will also shift towards the center of buoyancy. And again, at some point, these two centers will become vertically aligned again. At this point, the kayak again is stable, technically is in static equilibrium again, because these two forces cancel one another out. Any push past this point means that kayak will capsize. Okay, so let's say we have a human now. Let's say this is a human sitting on our sit on top kayak. Having a weight on top of our kayak changes the dynamics. And how? Once we place a human on the kayak, the human weight pushes the kayak down. So there will be more water displacement and more buoyant force. And as you saw, the center of gravity will go to the middle of the weight above the surface. That would roughly be around the chest area of a human sitting on top of a sit-on-top kayak. If we push the kayak down now, because the center of gravity is higher, the two forces will become aligned at a lower angle. So the kayak will reach as the point of no return at a lower angle. Now, I've seen a lot of stability videos that people try to lean to one side and when they reach this point, they call it point of no return. You could feel that if you go past that point, the kayak will capsize. Now, there's two scenarios that can happen here. You can flip the kayak and that means you will have to flip it back up. But you can jump off. If you can predict flipping, you can jump off. And what happens if you jump off is that center of gravity immediately falls back down to where it was because the weight of the person is removed from the kayak and the kayak will immediately go back to its upright position. Now, the, the advantage of jumping off is that, first of all, you won't lose any gear. Second of all, some kayaks are very heavy and cumbersome. And uh, basically, the bigger, the heavier, the more stable the kayak is, the more difficult it gets to capsize and the more difficult it gets to flip back to its upright position if capsized. So you might want to just jump off, especially if you're in deep water, because it's going to be a challenge to flip it back to its upright position. Let's talk about the weight of the paddler in relation to stability. I have seen a lot of videos on YouTube 
kayak review videos or stability videos that the paddlers think that somehow a certain type of kayak is more suitable for a heavier person or they say they're heavy so therefore the kayak is suitable or not suitable for them well surprise it does make very very little difference if you're heavy or light as long as the whole weight is below the kayak's weight capacity i'll try to make it as simple as possible the heavier the person is the more force they exert basically it would be easier for them to lean to one side and the kayak will respond quickly they'll be easier for them to rattle the kayak because obviously they're heavier and there will be more force they'll apply but at the same time they make the kayak sink more that means there will be more water displacement and there will be more buoyant force and there will be more upwards force so these two forces kind of cancel one another out when the person is light on the other hand there will be less water displaced, less buoyant force because they don't sink the kayak as much and the whole combination of person and kayak will be lighter and more prone to rattling and capsizing but at the same time the person exerts less force because they are lighter. So I hope I convey what I mean, but it doesn't really matter. As long as the weight is below the weight capacity of the kayak, it doesn't make a huge difference if the paddler is heavier or lighter. Okay, let's talk about sitting down, standing up, and stability. When the person is sitting down on the kayak, the center of gravity will be roughly around their chest area, as we mentioned before. When they stand up, the center of gravity will raise up to the same spot around their chest area. This position, if we heal the kayak or if the person leans to one side, we reach the point of no return at a very low angle because obviously center of gravity is significantly higher. Now this applies only to situations that the paddler is perpendicular to the surface of the kayak. We're not talking about having a good balance. Potentially, in some cases, you could stand up on the edge of your kayak and keep yourself upright with good balance and still not capsize. This video is not about that. Okay, let's talk about the weight and the width of the kayak and stability. Wider and heavier kayaks offer more stability, basically, because they have... Uh, larger surface area on the water and they have slightly lower center of gravity other thing is that the center of the kayak acts like a pivot point and each side acts like a lever arm simply put pushing one side down means lifting the opposite side up and the heavier the kayak is the more force you would require to push one side down at the same time when the lever arms are longer it also requires more force because it means, uh, again, lifting up the opposite side and the longer they get, more force you would need. One other point is that when the kayaks are wider, the center of buoyancy will have more space to shift to. Uh, like in this case, if the kayak was a couple of inches wider, center of buoyancy would shift further to the right and you would obviously need a significantly higher angle of heel to reach the point of no return and capsize it. Okay, heavy white kayaks versus narrow and light kayaks. So obviously heavier and wider kayaks are more stable. At the same time, they're dif difficult to deal with, difficult to maneuver, difficult to load and unload. Also, if you capsize them, it could be a big challenge to flip them back to their upright position. Narrow kayaks are less stable, uh, but at the same time, they're easy to maneuver. They're easy to grab and go, lift and load, and uh, easy to maneuver. They're fast and agile. But I personally own a narrow light kayak that I deliberately capsized and tried to climb back up. And I could not. I struggled a lot with it. And it was very difficult to climb back up on it because 
No matter what I did, it would lift up. It was just too light. I grabbed the opposite side handle so many times and I would try to push myself up, but the kayak would lift up. So it's one other disadvantage of a narrow light kayak. So I had to drag it swimming to the shore and uh, and reach the shore and jump back up on it. The length of the kayak from back to the front also plays an important role in relation to stability. The longer the kayak is, the more stable it becomes. And it is because obviously the longer the kayak is, there will be more surface area in contact with the water. There will be a greater volume of the kayak submerged. The kayak will be heavier and everything else that we talked about will increase with the length of the kayak. So it plays a very important role in relation to stability as well. Okay, hull designs. Generally speaking, we have two categories, displacement and planing designs. Planing doesn't apply here because it's just for boats that when they reach a certain speed they plane above the water. In our case fishing kayaks and generally kayaks uh, are under the displacement category. As you see some of the common hull designs and uh, let's start with the V-Hull. As a general rule the lowest point of the kayak under the surface gets the most amount of upward pressure. That means the water tries to push this tip in this V-Hall case up, which makes the, this V designs prone to leaning to one side or leaning to the other more often. Uh, in a pontoon style, again, pressure is applies, applies to the lowest points. And as you see, there are two. So one of them acts like, it's like having an outrigger, basically. And so just, it's extremely stable. They're very stable because obviously the, the water pressure, buoyancy pressure is on the sides. Catamaran is the same thing. These are my favorite. These two, they're very, very good. Pontoon and catamarans are, are great. Tritune is less common. Flat bottom is not my favorite. Again, V-Hall and flat bottom are not my favorite, really. This has a bigger surface contact with water that means they're very slow and they have a very shallow draft that makes them very bad for tracking and also because they don't have any volumes under the water uh, they tend to drift around and not track well the advantage is this, these are good for shallow fishermen for rivers and stuff Multi-hull, these are common, they're okay. I would like to see more volume on the sides than the middle, but most of the manufacturers make the, the middle more, put the, the volume in the middle. I don't know why, because, you know, there's more pressure on the middle and you don't want that because it would lean to one side or the other. I think they're still trying to evolve from leisure kayaking to fishing because this, to me, looks like, a leisure kayak mostly for speed and uh, the difference between pontoon and catamaran is that the catamaran has a, a deeper draft which means more of the kayak is under the surface that makes it uh, better for tracking and speed uh, pontoon sits on the surface surface like the flat bottom mostly and like if we have a v, shallow v as well it will sit on the surface that makes them perform poorly on choppy waters because they don't cut through the water uh, a, a sharp deeper draft cuts through the waves in uh, choppy waters so it generally speaking it performs better but again they probably w won't be suitable for a shallow river because they have more volume under the water. They have a deeper draft. So I think I mentioned everything. And um, yeah. Key takeaways and conclusions. Best kayaks, brands. You know, it's all subjective. I like Old Towns. I like Crescents only for the top deck. Uh, I like, but generally speaking, I like pontoons and catamarans. 
catamaran would be a procession outlaw. Best weight width length, I currently have a 44 pound um, kayak, which is too light and it's 30 inch wide. So I'm upgrading to a bigger kayak. Weight, I think over 50 pounds is minimum, should be minimum. With, I, I go for anything above 32, ideally 34. Length, anything above 10 feet. Best practices, scuppers are important because they are not only for draining water, they are also a point that top deck touches the bottom hull and that means strength. That means reinforcement. That means the deck wouldn't flex. Dry hatch, I'm not a fan. I'd like my kayak to be sealed. That's the whole point of a sit on top kayak, a sealed kayak. And in the future, if I wanted, I, it's easy to cut. It's plastic. So I'd like, I lean towards manufacturer to make a sealed kayak and they just like put a mark on their deck for future cutting. Screw housing is kind of important. Screw housing is like a little bit drop of plastic inside of the kayak that screws thread into that instead of penetrating the kayak's body. Like as you see in this photo. This is an old town kayak. And also, you know, I, I reached a point that I like to have a kayak to feel safe to offer it to family and friends and uh, my current kayak feels a little bit overwhelming for newbies and I definitely want something stable for standing honestly uh, I have a bad back and I feel really really like standing up especially when you spend hours and hours fishing and you really need stretch and my kayak is not stable enough for standing that is why I think I think standing is becoming an integral part of kayak fishing and it has to be there at least for me if i it's just personal opinion but if i was about to design a kayak for myself i would this i i just am in love with this simple deck design of the crescent kayaks and it's in all of them it's amazing and uh, i would combine this with either a perception outlaw hull design which is a trimaran or cat, catamaran with a long keel or I would combine this deck with a, an, an old town an old town bottom hull design that would be my the ideal f kayak the ideal design for me the ultimate kayak hopefully a designer one of them make the same thing uh, but that's all I have for you today hopefully it'll help you make a better decision in your future kayak purchases and if you want to learn more about the dynamics of floating objects and water and uh, diving into buoyancy and water pressure and the technicality of all of that and how all of these forces interact to influence stability, I linked a YouTube channel called Naval Engineering Education Center above. So click on that and uh, for in-depth explanations about all of that. You have a great day.